Hi, it is Saturday the 29th of February, so it is a leap year this year, so today is an extra day and uh, people have been doing all sorts of different things with their extra day. I've seen a lot of people doing readathons, like 24 hour readathons. So I thought today I would join in and I'm going to be doing a Jacqueline Wilson readathon. So I mentioned this on Twitter a little while ago. I posted a picture of all the Jacqueline Wilson books that I have because my mum brought over a box of loads of my old books and stuff from um, when I lived at home and I found a ton of my old Jacqueline Wilson books and I have them next to me, I'll show you them in a sec. I am so excited to have them all again and I realised that I have kind of forgotten a lot of them and I also had kind of a massive urge to reread a lot of them just for nostalgia's sake. A lot of them I really loved and it's going to be interesting to reread some of them now as an adult and just see how different they are. So one of my favourite books of all time is Lola Rose by Jacqueline Wilson. I don't know what it is about it that I love so much but I have read it I don't even know, maybe 10 times or something, since I was a kid up to now. And it's one that I've read fairly recently, like within the past couple of years. I don't know why I enjoy it so much, but I just really do. I just love the story. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be rereading that this weekend, because as I've said, I have read it within the past couple of years. I remember everything about it. I wanna read ones that I haven't read in years. So I'm not sure what books I'm actually gonna read. I'm gonna kind of just decide as I go along, I think. I'll just kind of look at a book and decide if I wanna read it. So hang on, let me show you all my books that I have. <laughs> so here's my stack. I don't even know how to get them all in shot. The ones that I have here are Kiss, The Cat Mummy, Twin Trouble, The Dare Game, um, Tracy Beaker, Buried Alive, The Illustrated Mum, Jackie Daydream, The Story of Tracy Beaker, Cliffhanger, The Suitcase Kid, Girls in Tears, The Mum Minders, Video Rose, Bad Girls, Double Act, The Lottie Project, and The Worry Website. <sighs> Phew. So those are all the books that I have and Lola Rose is on my shelf behind me somewhere. So as I said, I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna read. I've got a couple in mind that I definitely wanna read. Um, things like Double Act, which was one of my favorites because I'm an identical twin. So me and my sister really kind of identified with that book a lot. So I'm gonna definitely reread that. The Lottie Project, I also really loved because it's my name, like um, Charlotte is the main character and I always wanted to be called Lottie because of her, but it never kind of, <laughs> it never really happened. So I'm just gonna see as I go along today and maybe tomorrow, how many I can read in 24 hours. So it's, um, I'm not sure what the time is. I think it's close to 1 p.m. now. I've had a, a busy morning. I've kind of like, I've filmed another video, my uh, Chamber of Secrets review, which went up on Saturday. I have just filmed and edited and it's just exporting. So I've had a busy morning. So I've kind of like cut some of my reading time away from doing that other video. So now I think I'm gonna make some food and get a load of snacks together and spend the rest of my day reading some Jacqueline Wilson books and I will vlog it. So come along with me, let's have a good day. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I have some cheese and crackers and some grapes. I have some cool original Doritos. And I have white dairy milk with Oreo, which is incredible. Uh, I also have my stack of books. Hang on, let me see if I can show you. Okay, so here is my stack. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna read first. I think I wanna pick something pretty short just so I can get myself into it. You know, I think if I pick a short book and read it really quickly, it's gonna make me feel like I'm winning. Um, so if I pick something that's really short, then that will be a good start. So I think to start with, I'm gonna pick two super short ones just so I can get this going. I am going to pick Twin Trouble and The Cat Mummy because they're both proper short. Hang on, let me get them off the pile. Look how tiny they are. They're both like really tiny. 
Um, one of them is 64 pages and the other one is 96. I can't remember much about these at all. I remember with this one, the girl, uh, her mum is pregnant with twins and it's all about her dealing with that. Um, and then the cat mummy, I literally can't remember anything about. So this is gonna be really interesting. I just remember loving both of these as a kid. So I'm gonna get started with these and I will update you as I go along, probably when I finish them because it won't take me very long. <laughs> Why did I have to pick such a sad book to start with? My God. So I've just read The Cat Mummy. Um, I knew, I remembered that it was about um, a cat being turned into a mummy, but that's as much as I remembered. It's about a girl called Verity whose cat dies and she is, she's learned about the ancient Egyptians in school and about mummification. So she decides to turn her cat Mabel into a mummy. And then uh, she leaves her cat in her wardrobe for days and it starts to smell really bad. And then her parents and her grandparents, or like her dad and her grandparents find out and they give her like a proper burial in the garden. And Verity's mum also died when she was a baby. Um, when Verity was a baby, not when her mum was a baby. That would be some weird time travel. Uh, so it was all just very sad where they were remembering also like burying Verity's mum while they're burying the cat. So I uh, hopefully will read something a little bit more um, happy now to raise the sombre mood that's going on. <laughs> what a good start. Good choice, Charlotte. <laughs> So next I'm going to move on to Twin Trouble just because it's super short. I'm probably going to read it in like 20 minutes. I'm, this is so fun though. I'm finding this so fun. I've got all my snacks. I The rain is beating down outside so it feels cosy being under a blanket. And yeah, I'm excited to see how many books I can get through. So let's carry on. It's time to read Twin Trouble. So it's three o'clock, I have just finished book two and I don't remember this book, Twin Trouble, being so weird. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, it's about a girl called Connie whose parents um, have twins and one thing that's actually quite cool that Jacqueline Wilson includes in this is that they say that they had to go to the doctors to have tests and things done to kind of let them have more children and it's little things like that that I really like Jacqueline Wilson's writing for, where she just includes all these little bits that show different types of families or like, I don't know, just different issues that are just so subtle. Like it's just one sentence, but it might kind of encourage a child to ask, well, what does she mean by that? And then you can kind of tell the children that sometimes women need help to have more children or sometimes women can't have more children and it's I just love how she has this kind of she manages to teach so many lessons just so subtly through her books but onto this book being weird she is given these magical beads by a district nurse who comes to their house and if she like clinks the beads together she has like her she sees two twins of her family members so like she's out with her gran and she kind of like hits the beads together and then there's like twin grands and they're being really kind of smothering and telling her she can have loads of treats and stuff uh, and then it happens again with like twin mums and then twin dads and each time she sees these weird like twin people she it's kind of like her learning a lesson about how they're these perfect parents where they're just like, the mum is just kind of like, oh, we, we're we going to eat these diet foods, but we'll cook you your favorite foods and your dad should be doing this and he isn't. And they're kind of like these perfect parents, but she is smothered by them and she looks at her actual parents and she's just like, no, they're actually perfect and I want them. I don't want you perfect parents. So I guess it is quite a sweet lesson. Like it's kind of, showing that if there's certain things if you're a child that you you don't really like about your parents or like maybe that's a bit extreme but I mean just uh if you get irritated by things that your parents are saying or whatever they're actually just doing it for your good like 
I don't know. It's a, it's very weird. It's a very weird book, but I think I can see the lesson it's trying to teach where it's, it's basically saying appreciate your parents or who they are because they're special and they're doing things for you. And uh, I do think her parents in this are very snappy. Like they're very mean sometimes. Like Connie is, she must be like seven or something. And she, she's just being a kid and the parents are very snappy and very kind of cross and mean. But uh, I guess when you've got newborn twins uh, that don't sleep, you would probably be a little bit crabby. So I guess I can't really blame them for that. <laughs> so I need to decide another book to read now. I'm tempted to read Bad Girls. Bad Girls was a book that I really loved when I was younger. Um, I read it several times and I really liked it, but I can't remember much about it. So I think that's gonna be the next one I'm gonna read. Oh, it's so hard trying to get a book from the bottom of such a huge pile. Okay, I've got it. Um, I can't really remember much about this, but um, yeah, I think I'm gonna read this one next. It's 178 pages. So again, it's not too long. Um, I'll see how long this takes me. Right now it is five past three, so Let's see how long this one takes and uh, see how quickly I can get through this one. So this is book three. It's four o'clock and I'm so tired. I've read 72 pages of Bad Girls. I'm so sleepy. Oh my God, I think this is what I get for sitting under a blanket for hours and just reading. I feel so sleepy. And I wanted to see how much I could read today and I'm falling asleep already. Um, I think maybe once I've read this, I need to do something to wake myself up a bit and then come back to reading. But knowing me, I'll probably put this down and wanna go straight back into another one. I just, I thought I'd update you on that. I'm just, <laughs> I want to go to sleep. So how long I'll stay up tonight to carry on reading? I don't know because I might fall asleep by 10 o'clock. I'm such an old lady. <laughs> so I'm gonna carry on reading some more of this and see if I can finish it. Uh, pretty soon. I've got like less than 100 pages left. So I've just finished Bad Girls. Now is when it starts to get dark outside. It's like half five and um, it's when the lighting starts to go very orange and weird and kind of highlights the bags under my eyes so I look great. Um, you always get the best of me in my reading vlogs. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just finished Bad Girls and really enjoyed it. I liked this a lot when I was a kid. Um, I read it a few times. I remember always kind of identifying a lot with the main character because it's all about bullying and I was bullied a bit in primary school. Not to a massive extent but I was kind of always like the really sh like me and my sister and my friendship group were always like the kind of shy nerdy quiet group. Uh, which obviously is always target for bullying. Um, so yeah, that happened. Um, so I remember always really identifying with the main character because it's all about bullying. This book, I feel like, um, I just tweeted about this as well. In case you're interested in seeing my uh, Twitter thread as I'm doing this throughout the day, uh, I will link it in the description in case you're interested. I mean, I'm repeating most of what I'm saying in my Twitter thread um, in this video anyway, but I really love Jacqueline Wilson's kind of signature style of writing important themes in her books, which is kind of doing it in a way that is, it gets the message across really well. It makes you think, and especially for kids, it might kind of, especially in this case as well, where if they realize they might be bullying someone without even kind of realizing it, or they are the target of bullying themselves and they've never really noticed, or like they've never really kind of, they haven't believed that it's bullying, um, because that can happen too. You can be bullied and just not really believe that you're being bullied. You're just like, oh no, it's fine. Uh, and this book covers that really well. But Jacqueline Wilson covers things like bullying and other kind of important themes in a way that is so subtle and like it's not in your face, like it's not a really obvious moral. I find a lot of children's books are so obvious and in your face with their morals, but Jacqueline Wilson's books, she covers so many morals and so many important themes and like teaching kids about like this, things like bullying and different parental issues and things like that. But she just does it in such a subtle way that I think that is what makes her 
writing so successful is because it's just so accessible to everyone and you feel like you're still reading a really good story without getting like a moral shoved in your face. I think it's also why the books are still quite fun to read as an adult because you would feel like you're reading such a good story. The characters are always so developed and she must have thousands of characters by now, easily. And they all feel like, I don't know, her stories just feel so real and like she knows what it's like to be a kid. And she, obviously everyone does because everyone's a kid at some point in their life, but you know what I mean? Like she, she really gets in the head of what it's like to be a kid or a teenager. And she writes the kind of themes and issues really, really well. And that's really something that she's done in Bad Girls. I think that's why I enjoyed it so much as a kid because it just feels like such a good story. Another little thing that I picked up on that I kind of enjoyed was the little tiny like Tracy Beaker crossover. And I don't even know if that was meant to be a thing. Um, I don't know the order of what, like when these were written, but one of the characters, Tanya, she talks about how she might have to, like she's fostered um, and she talks about how she might have to go to a children's home and she calls it the dumping ground. And I just thought, Tracy Beaker, <laughs> little Tracy Beaker cross over there. I wonder if she goes to the same one as Tracy. Like I wonder if she goes away and she knows Tracy Beaker. I bet I'll read Tracy Beaker now. There's a character called Tanya that I never even realized. <laughs> so now that it's like just gone half five, I don't know whether to carry on with another book now, go on to the fourth one. I'm kind of tempted to just go straight on to a fourth one or get up and do something. I'm not so tired now than I was earlier. I've kind of woken myself back up a bit reading that book, but I have things I need to do. Like I know I've got some blog stuff I need to do and like I need to go and wash up and tidy the place up, but I'm also tempted just to procrastinate everything and just sit and read. I mean, I'm doing a readathon, so surely that's fine. I'll just sit and read all day until it comes to tea and then I'll just either get my sister to bring me something or order food. <laughs> it's one of those days. I think I'm just gonna screw it and move straight on to the fourth book. I'm not sure what yet. I'm just gonna have a quick look and then I will let you know what I've chosen. Okay, I've chosen. I've gone with another childhood favourite just because I've realised I can't actually remember what most of the book is about. Like, I can't actually remember what happens. So the book I'm gonna go with is Double Act. And um, this is another twin related book. I've had two so far. I loved this book so much as a kid because I am a twin and me and my sister were obsessed with anything to do with twins. Like Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, obsessed with anything to do with twins. Um, the Parent Trap was another thing we were obsessed with. Literally anything to do with twins. We just find ourselves being really interested in. I don't know why, is that a twin thing? Like are other twins always really interested in other twins? Um, I just, yeah, it's really funny. So one book that we both always loved was Double Act because it's twins. So I'm gonna read this now. Again, it's a pretty short one. It's 180 seven pages so similar to bad girls and that took me i'm not sure um it didn't take me as long as uh like i was distracted a lot i was checking twitter and i was just like replying to messages and stuff so i'm not sure how long it actually took me to read but if i can read this in the next like hour then that would be great i'll keep you updated god why does my skin look so red in here this lighting is atrocious um, so my sister just came home with pizza and ice cream for me because she's a little gem and she's amazing. Um, she is not staying here tonight. Um, so I have the house to myself for the whole night and I'm going to be a saddo on a Saturday night and read Jacqueline Wilson all night. Hooray! And my camera's about to die. So time to plug it in. Okay. I'm back. Um, as I was saying, my sister came home from work today, um, like 20 minutes ago. And she is staying at her boyfriend's tonight. So I am home alone on a Saturday night. So I'm gonna spend all my time reading my Jacqueline Wilson books and eating pizza and ice cream. And I'm ecstatic about it. I don't know what I'll do while I eat, but I don't know, I might just carry on reading. I only read like 30 pages of Double Act, I think. Um, it's like an hour later since that last update. Um, when I said I wanted to finish it within the hour, that didn't happen. <laughs> so I, 
want to try and finish that soon because I do want to try and read more than four books. Like I hope to get through a fairly decent amount of books before um, tomorrow. So uh, I'll see. I don't know. These readathons, I always end up being way too ambitious, I think. Like I always set myself goals that are way too ambitious. So I think I want to try and be slightly less ambitious, be more realistic. But at the same time, they're like, a lot of them are such tiny books that I feel like I should just fly through them. So yeah, maybe tonight, once I've eaten, I will see how many I can fly through. <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline Wilson tends to use the word twit a lot and <laughs> every time every time I read it I think it's saying the word twat so I just read this and I thought it said <laughs> a new stupid oh god I'm such a child a new stupid trendy twat of a dad <laughs> oh, it doesn't it says twit it says twit, okay? I just had to double take. I read it and then went on to the next page and then went back like, wait, okay, no, no, it says twit. It says twit. <laughs> Pizza. Alexa, stop. Let's go get pizza. Okay, I'm gonna like watch me on Netflix or something and then I will be back to read all night <laughs> So my pizza is done. It is gone um, Ice cream will be coming later. Sorry. That was an awful shot. I was like, oh, I'll film walking back from the kitchen and most of it was like down here So I've eaten Ugh. It's now time to this is the worst video clip ever. <laughs> it's now time to carry on reading. I am going to finish double act and then I will move on to something else. I'm determined to see how many I can read tonight because I don't think I'm gonna read very much tomorrow. I think this might turn into a one day thing because tomorrow I wanna get a couple more videos filmed and I also wanna write a ton of blog posts and stuff and then I'm going to my friends in the afternoon. So uh, this might just be kind of seeing how much I can read before I go to bed tonight. What time I go to bed, I don't know. It might be the middle of the night, I'll see. Um, it depends how much I wanna carry on reading. But yeah, so I'm gonna carry on reading this and then pick something else to carry on my night and then have ice cream later. <laughs> finished another book. Uh, book four is finished. It's, um, I would tell you the time, but I don't know where my phone's gone. 25 past eight, so, uh, I mean, it's been a few hours since I started this, like six hours, and I've read four books, which is less than I thought I would read. I thought I'd read them all like really quickly considering they're so short and they're kids books, but I've been distracted as usual. I think that's just my life, getting distracted from things. Um, but that's still all right. I mean, these two books are nearly 200 pages each, so I don't know. Um, I'm gonna read some more now. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep going all night. I don't know what is next. Um, let me pick. So because I've just read two, I say long ones in comparison to the rest of the books. Um, a couple of ones that are like 200 pages each. I might read a couple of super short ones again, just so I can boost up the number of books that I've read. Is that cheating? I don't think so. They're still books. I've got a couple of really tiny books here that I might kind of bang through now really quickly. Um, and that is The Mum Minder and Video Rose. This one is definitely not one of her well-known ones, but I kind of remember quite a lot about it. I just dropped a book on the floor. I remember quite a lot about this. I remember reading it and really enjoying it, I think. 
uh, when I was like a kid and uh, it's super short, it's like 88 pages. So I might fly through this one. And then also the Mumminder is one that I remember enjoying as well. So I'm gonna power through a couple of really short ones now. Um, and then I have three more here that I would love to try and read tonight. Like they're the ones that are kind of narrowed down out of the whole pile um, that I would definitely love to reread. So I have the Lottie Project, the Illustrated Mum, this is one that is one of the most popular ones, I think, and it's the one of the ones that people love most. But I don't think, I don't even know if I read it as a kid, which is crazy. I must have, I think I've read all of these, but I don't remember anything about it. So I really wanna read this and see if I actually do remember reading it. And then the last one is The Worry Website, which is another one that isn't a well-known one of hers, I don't think but it's one that I kind of remember reading as a kid. But again, I can barely remember anything about it. So yeah, so I'm gonna read the two super short ones first. They're like less than 90 pages each. And then I will try and read these ones before I go to bed tonight. Wait, I only just realized that I didn't, I didn't talk about the book I've just read. I just rushed on to picking the next books to read. Didn't actually talk about the book I've just read. Um, double act. I really enjoyed it, thought I would. I forgot the format of it because it's like told from the perspective of both twins. It's written as if they like, they found a book that they're writing in. Um, so it kind of switches between both of them and they're actually writing in this book. So like um, there's Ruby and Garnet, the twins. Ruby is kind of more loud and boisterous than Garnet. She's like messier and like she is less emotional. She's basically the me of me and my sister. <laughs> And then Garnet is uh, the one who is quieter and a lot more sensitive and um, she kind of worries about things a lot more, which is basically my sister. <laughs> um, and no wonder we uh, kind of related to them so much as kids. <laughs> I hope she doesn't mind me calling her sensitive and worrying, but she'll probably agree. Yeah, it's just, it kind of, it's just about them being twins and it's about what it's like to be a twin. And it kind of also, I think one reason I like it a lot is because it shows the importance of having some independence as a twin. So one thing that we've always struggled with is the fact that we are so kind of joined at the hip. Like we always have been, uh, we've done everything together. And like, even now we're 25 years old and we still live together and we probably will still live together for a while. And we've always had that same thing where we kind of, it's hard to get, when you're so used to being so kind of joined together, it's, it kind of, once you do then start getting independence, it feels a bit weird. And I think for us, it was, it helped a lot the fact that we went to uni so far away from each other. So we were suddenly, we went from spending 18 years of our life together to suddenly being thrust three hours apart. And it kind of taught us to be independent. So now independence isn't such a bad thing, but I think that three years of being in uni helped a lot and it made me realize how independent you need to be if you're a twin. I think a twin relationship is so different to a normal sibling relationship. It's so much more kind of, I don't know, you just, I'm obviously I'm kind of, I, because I am a twin, I have never been a normal sibling. I don't have any other siblings to compare my twin relationship to, if that makes sense we have always had that kind of connection that I guess normal siblings might not have. It's a very unique thing. So I think this does a really, really good job of kind of writing that experience and writing about how weird it can be to have such a, a strong connection to one person and like, to sometimes feel like you need to be your own person for a little while. And the book kind of ends with them doing their own separate thing. I would kind of love to know how that worked out for them. Um, I don't know if she ever did a follow up to Double Act. If she did, then I'd be really interested in it. But if she hasn't, then she needs to get on this because I really want to see what happens afterwards. If anyone knows if there was any 
ever any follow-up to double apps then let me know i mean i could just google it but <laughs> you can tell me instead so yeah i really enjoyed this um i think like i said being a uh, being an actual identical twin always gave me and my sister a big connection to this book because we just related to them a lot and because the characters like the girls are so similar to us personality wise as well it was i think it's just one that i've always connected with a lot so now it's time to move on to the next book. Now I've actually talked about that one. So as, like I said, I'm gonna read these two super short books. Hopefully I can read them within an hour now that I have no distractions and I will get back to you. <sighs> it's getting later. Um, this is the time when I start to wonder how long I'm gonna manage to keep going. But it's 10 o'clock now. I have just read two more books, the two short ones that I said I was gonna read, Video Rose and The Mum Minder. Video Rose is very weird. I don't remember it being that weird. Um, I'm getting up to wake myself up a bit and I'm going to get ice cream, that's why I'm moving. But yeah, it's very strange. I didn't really expect it to be... That was loud, sorry. So weird. Um, but it was. <laughs> it's basically about a girl who is obsessed with videos like it was written in 1992 so it's all vhs and she her video player breaks um so they get this guy in who is like really cheap to come and fix it and his company's called works like magic and he comes to fix it within like a second it's like there's a flash of light and then it's fixed um and then she also at the same time gets given time traveling powers like she can just scrunch up her fist like this and she will travel it's like one fist to travel backwards and one to travel forwards in time and she is also obsessed with food and snacks me <laughs> and she every time she eats like every time she gets two pounds to go to the video shop and get a new video and some snacks she will eat the snacks and then rewind time and then eat the snacks again and she does it like four times so she has like four ice creams why have I gone out of focus? Excuse me. Maybe it's too dark. Let's move. Okay, <laughs> this is better. Um, it's just never really explained, her powers. She also goes like way forward in time too. And she sees herself as an adult and she's like directing a film. And it's very strange, but it's never explained. I thought there would be a moral. Like Jacqueline Wilson books always have a lesson or a moral. This one totally didn't. I thought it would be a whole thing like, you don't want to travel in time because you don't want to see how your future changes you. Or like you don't, if you kind of reverse time, then it'll mess things up, you know, that sort of thing. But no, nothing. <laughs> no moral or lesson or anything. I was thinking maybe because it's one of her early books, she didn't have her kind of brand yet for like introducing kids to like important life lessons and things. Maybe she didn't do that yet, but it was just a bit of a random story. It was a lot of fun to read. Um, it was definitely more fun than Twin Trouble, which was the other weird story. Um, but yeah, I just can't get my head around it. It's very strange. The other one that I read is The Mum Minder, and that's just so fun. It's about a mum who is a child minder for several kids, but she gets the flu. And her nine-year-old daughter, Sadie, helps her with the kids. And all of the mums of the kids basically chip in for this week that Sadie's mum is ill. And they take all of the kids that she usually minds um, to their jobs each day. So all these kids go to three different jobs throughout this week. So they go to work in like a police office and then they work in a chocolate shop and then like a something else, an office, like a typist's. It's just really silly and it's it makes me laugh because she wrote it as a school project and it's like her project was to write a diary of her holidays and this was her half term and she at the end she ends up getting the flu from her mum and she can't go to school um, and she's just like oh that's great because it means I get extra holiday but that means I can't give in my diary for homework so what have I just written this book for and that's how it ends <laughs> and it just I just love it. It just makes me laugh. It's just so silly. I think it's one of the most fun ones I've read so far because it's just so silly and just so fun. I love it. So the next one I'm going to read off my stack I think is the Worry website. I don't remember anything about it. I don't even know if I read it all the, like, all the way as a kid. I remember reading it a bit but I can't remember reading it 
very much at all. So it's going to be an interesting one, I think. At the moment, I've remembered most of them. So it's the first one that I'm almost going into with absolutely no knowledge of what happens. So it's going to be interesting. I'm going to go and get some ice cream to wake myself up. And then I am going to carry on. Like I said, it's currently now past 10 o'clock. So I'm going to see how long I can keep this up for. Oh, it's getting very dark now. This lighting is gonna start getting awful. I have chocolate cookie dough, Ben and Jerry's. I don't think I've had this before and I'm so excited. It's like the low calorie stuff and I don't know what it's like. So let's try it. It's like a taste test live on camera. That's fab. I'm just gonna sit here and eat the whole pot. Who cares about reading anymore? Time for book seven. Seven? I think I'm on seven. I've lost count. The Worry website. Let's go. I love how as this video goes on, I'm just getting more and more horizontal. <laughs> I'm gonna be lying down soon. Um, I just finished book number seven, The Worry website. Um, another really good book. It's another one that shows that Jacqueline Wilson is so good at knowing children's issues and problems that they might be facing and how to kind of explore them from the mind of a child and she does this while also giving some really good advice on how to overcome these worries that the kids might be having there's all sorts of different worries in there anything from I'm getting a stepmum and I don't know if I feel comfortable with it or my dad is hurting my mum and he is still here and I fancy a girl and I want her to be my girlfriend. Uh, there's, it goes from different extremes um, but she's just not scared to cover any topic but she just does it so well from like a kind of naive child's perspective. Uh, it never gets too dark but it gets dark enough for you to kind of think a lot about what they're going through and yeah she just does a really good job of then giving some advice on how to maybe overcome this. I also really love the teacher in this book Mr Speed he's just so great and I think more teachers need to be like him he's amazing uh, so yeah I really enjoyed it I can't remember much about it at all I didn't realize that it's kind of split into loads of different kind of separate stories about each person. Uh, basically it's about this website that the teacher sets up where people can go and submit their worries and then other people, it's like a forum, other people can, like students can go on when they use the computer to reply to people's worries and um, you get all sorts of different comments on there. Each story is, like each chapter, is a different story from a different kid talking about their own worry and you get a little bit of story about their family or what whatever's worrying them and yeah it's just really interesting and she just covers so many different perspectives and issues and she's just great <laughs> so as you can tell from the position that i'm in i am kind of flagging a bit now it's 25 to 12 and i've read seven books today I'm just going to really quickly work out how many pages I've read. In my tweet thread, I've been saying how many pages each book is. So I'm really quickly just going to work out the total number of pages I've read so far. 824. I started at, was it like half two? Maybe half two I started. So it's been like 10 hours and I've read 824 pages. So... I mean, that's not too bad. I've had quite a few breaks, like I've been distracted quite a bit, just kind of scrolling through Twitter and um, making food and stuff. I think that's pretty decent. I do have two more books that I really wanted to try and read tonight and I don't feel that, I don't feel tired. Um, I just feel like I need a break from reading maybe. But if I have a break now, I'm pre pretty much just probably gonna go to bed considering it's like 25 to 12 at night. So I'm debating, do I just go to bed and I'll read some more when I wake up in the morning? Or do I try and read two more books now? These are the two books that I have left. I have The Illustrated Mum and The Lottie Project. And they're both about 200 pages each. 220 pages is The Illustrated Mum. Do I have the energy to read another 420 pages tonight? Probably not. Can I read one of these tonight? Maybe. 
Maybe I'll read one more tonight before I go to bed and then tomorrow I'll wake up and read another one. And my class is like a 24 hour readathon. So that means if I started, if I look at what time I started, then I can count that as my finish time tomorrow. And even though I will be busy doing some other stuff, I can just read in between what I'm doing and then I can finish at whatever time I started today and see how many I get to read in 24 hours. I think I might do that. I am gonna move because sitting like this is not doing my neck much good. I can feel it aching already. Uh, and my voice, I feel like, sounds really tired. <laughs> so I am gonna decide what I'm gonna do. I might go upstairs and read another one in bed, but then I might just go to sleep. I don't know. I might read another one here, but I don't know. I'll see. I'll see what happens. I'll let you know. <laughs> It's now like almost 10 past 12. I've just spent the past 15 minutes or whatever just scrolling through Twitter and I keep picking up a book, looking at a page and being like, nah, I don't wanna read anymore. <laughs> I think I've read too much. In the grand scheme of things, I haven't read a huge amount really when you put all the books together. It's probably the size of like one big book, but uh, because I've been reading like all day, I feel like I've read for too long and now I just don't want to read anymore. I'm looking at a book and just the words aren't making any sense to me anymore. It's like I suddenly can't read English. So I am going to adjust this camera because I'm not comfortable. That's better. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go to bed because I'm just kind of looking at things now and I don't want to do any of them so I should probably go to sleep. I was hoping to get past the 1000 mark because that would just be pretty great but if I carry on reading tomorrow uh, I can still do that for this readathon. Um, so these are all the books I've read today. Um, it kind of looks like a bit of a pitiful pile, to be honest, because a lot of the books are so short. Um, I kind of went for all the really short ones. Um, I think maybe it is so exhausting because they are all completely different stories. So like I've finished a story, picked up a new story, read it, and then picked up a new one and they're all completely different stories, completely different characters. So I think that's my, maybe why it feels so exhausting and why I've read so much because they're all different stories. It's not just like I've read a couple of big books. So I think my brain's had enough for today. Tomorrow I'm hoping to read The Lottie Project and maybe The Illustrated Mum if I have time to read both. If I'm going to bed now, I should wake up at a pretty decent time, but let's see. I'm gonna go to bed and I will see you tomorrow. Well, for you, it'll be like in a couple of seconds. For me, it'll be uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Good night. Hi, so uh, it's the next day. I kind of ruined this weekend. Um, I say it's the next day, it's not even the next day, it's Monday. My God, what happened yesterday? <laughs> I will be good at some point at actually completing a readathon properly, but um, I don't even know what happened this weekend. I went to bed Saturday night after reading like, what was it? Seven Jacqueline Wilson books. And then I was gonna read more yesterday. I had full intentions to uh, read more yesterday and then I ended up filming like three YouTube videos. I edited and exported one, I uploaded another, I edited a podcast episode that went up today, I wrote a blog post, I went to my friends for a few hours. It was just an insane day and I had absolutely no more time to read any more Jacqueline Wilson books. So I ended this readathon on seven books which I wanted to try and read more of them, but I, yeah, I just, life happens. <laughs> I'm still quite happy with how much I read. Like I read almost a thousand pages, um, which is pretty decent. I know it's like kids books, so they're easy to get through, but um, yeah, I was quite pleased with that. And it was just such a fun weekend. It was like a complete no pressure weekend. Like I didn't want to pressure myself into just reading tons and yesterday ended up being such a good day because I just got so much done like I'm going to London um this weekend so it was a really good kind of catch-up day to get things ready to like schedule for the weekend while I'm away and yeah 
it ended up being a good day. So it's a win-win. I got to read seven books, it, which boosted my Goodreads total. I'm now on 30 books so far for like two months, which is decent. <laughs> I ended up reading like 18 books, I think, in February. I know a lot of them were short, like some of them were series of unfortunate events and some of them were Jacqueline Wilson. But still, that's still, they're still books. <laughs> and I'm quite pleased with that. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It kind of ended quite abruptly. I kind of expected to carry on reading and vlogging more yesterday, but um, obviously that didn't happen. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know if you wanna see more readathons like this, cause I've got loads of ideas for ones I can do. It's just finding the time to do them. I will see you soon with a new video. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Bye.